Well, in terms of what should we do about populism, particularly in Britain, where I'm from, uh, when you look at those voters who are populist, uh, they are often not just dissatisfied with our politics, they are often also uh, intensely dissatisfied with other domestic issues, in particular in Britain, immigration. And what you often find is that those people who are dissatisfied with our established politics also say, well, the mainstream parties have not been open and honest with us about an issue like immigration and they feel let down by their political elites. Mainstream politicians are very wary of having uh, an open uh, debate on, on the issue of immigration largely because uh, British public opinion is skewed very strongly against uh, immigration. Around 80% of British voters actually want less immigration. Uh, and so it's very difficult for mainstream politicians to have a discussion with those voters when they actually have very little control over the immigration that people are concerned about, which is low-skilled immigration, particularly from within the European Union. So it's very difficult for Labour and the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats to respond to that. Now, while they don't respond, Nigel Farage uh, and populists are saying, you know, the government is uh, uh, the government has no control over immigration. It cannot exert change on that issue. It is not listening to your concerns on this issue, which you feel uh, intensely concerned about. And in essence, what uh, UKIP and Nigel Farage are saying to voters is, say no three times. Say no to Westminster say no to Brussels and say no to immigration. And that is a populist narrative in Britain. Well, we just uh, published uh, a new book on uh, populism in Britain uh, called Revolt on the Right. And we wrote that because this issue is very misunderstood. There is uh, a uh, assumption in Britain that many people who support Nigel Farage are just disillusioned conservatives and just Eurosceptic, but actually we uh, analysed almost 6,000 of their supporters and found a very different uh, picture. These voters are very working class, low skilled, low educated, concerned about a range of domestic issues, the responsiveness of our politics, uh, concerns over immigration, as well as concerns over Europe. In fact, UKIP now are the most working class political party in British politics uh, since the Labour Party in the 1980s. Those who like the idea of Europe in Britain like to think that all you need to do is set out the statistical case for EU membership. Look at what it does to our economy. Look at what immigration contributes to our national economy. The problem is that voters who find Nigel Farage and UKIP attractive do not want to have a conversation just about economics. They want to have a conversation about perceived threats to ways of life, to national identity, to a set of values that they see as being challenged by Britain's EU membership. So the first thing is you have to have a conversation about those perceived identity conflicts, not just about setting out the economic case uh, for EU membership. And the second thing is populist and radical right parties in Europe are strongest among blue collar workers, those who have been left behind by the economic changes in Europe. For the centre-left and for progressives, again, that means having a specific conversation with those groups about why it is they feel that they cannot compete within uh, the new economic reality uh, and, with, and, and, and they cannot adapt to this very broad, very sweeping social change. All of our leaders are promising voters that they will now uh, respond to their concerns over, in particular, immigration. It's the second most important issue in British politics by reducing overall levels of migration. Well, they can't do that. That's in, it's, it, it's an impossible thing to achieve mm -hmm. because of various treaties and because of things that have been negotiated. So if you're going to make that promise and you can't deliver on it, the only thing you're going to do is fuel voter distrust in mainstream politics, right? So as a starter, don't make promises you can't keep.